All right, guys, so your model's orientation on the print bed is actually quite an important part of printing. Now, for this model in particular, I wouldn't say that it's extremely important, but we can most definitely show you some examples of what would be less than ideal when orienting your print. For example, you might load in a model, such as the Roctopus, and it might load in upside down, or what you would, you would perceive to be upside down. Now we can see that all these overhangs are actually way worse than they were in the previous section when we just saw the little bits underneath the eyelids. We've actually got a ton of material that isn't supported. So what we can do is use these quick select options down the bottom to manipulate our model. So we've got rotate, scale and mirror. What we're going to do is show you guys what each of those buttons does. I can go into rotate and lay this print flat. What that's going to happen is the printer's going to cure, sorry, is going to try and orient that print as flat as possible. As we can see, it didn't have a lot of uh, <laughs> luck with that. It's just laid it sort of to the side. What we're going to do though is we can manually see, obviously, this flat surface is the best surface to be against the print bed. So what we'll do is we'll turn that around using that green axis of rotation. We'll get it as close as we can and then we'll try lay flat out again and see what happens. There we go, so now we've got our octopus back to how it should be. Uh, obviously this process goes for every single model you ever import. You really wanna be thinking about how is the printer gonna handle printing successive layers. So going into that layer view can be helpful. You can actually step through and drag that slider up and see how it's building it up. You can imagine if we had all those overhangs it's just not feasible for the print to start with a tiny dot, which would be the top of his head, and build wide really fast without any supports because it's just not able to do it. That's not the way FDM works like we've gone through in that previous chapter. Alternatively, we've got some other options. So we can click on our print. That's the big deal as well. You have to left click on your print to get those options to come up. So left click on your print, go to scale. Now we can scale this to the maximum dimensions of our bed. So that's automatically just drawn it out as far as possible. Now it doesn't look like it's all the way out and that's because it's got that skirt on like we had before. So you can turn your skirt off if that's what you'd like. Turning off the skirt will allow you to get a little bit more out of your print volume. But we don't need to have a big Broctopus today. We just want that tiny one so we can click reset and go back to that. Now obviously you've got those options here. You can set X, Y or Z sizes. So you could set his height and it will scale all those other dimensions uniformly because we've got that little lock on. It's a pretty quick and easy one to do. And finally, we've got the mirror option, which we've seen. So we can mirror it in the X, Y, or Z axes if we like. Now, one more thing we can do to manipulate our models is we can either, right, we can right click them to get these options and we can center these on the platform. We can delete the object. We could multiply the object. We could split it into parts. That won't work for our octopus, but for some STLs where you've got multiple parts in one STL file, you can actually split that into parts and move each individual part around the bed there. Now we can delete or reload all objects. Also, we can reload the object's positions. So essentially what we're doing is we're just saying, hey Kira, can you set that back to the default way that it loaded in? Which isn't too big of a deal whatsoever. So that's pretty much the basics of moving your print around in the print bed. That's a very important part of 3D printing is making sure that you've got the right orientation before you set out to print. And you can really accomplish that just with the use of that overhangs view mode, as well as maybe having a look at the layers and making sure that you're not building things out too rapidly from the base of the model. Next, we're gonna go through the, some of the advanced settings. So things that go beyond these easy quick print profiles in Cura.